कृष्णवर्ण ईशा कृष्ण शांगोपांगस्त्रोपारषद snowy Himalayas, the sacred river Ganges flows across the plains of India for 1,600 miles before it reaches Mayapur in Navadweep, West Bengal. In this holy land is a temple that marks the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya. Today, pilgrims journey to Mayapur annually to celebrate the anniversary of Lord Chaitanya's appearance. They know of Lord Chaitanya as the boy genius who casually defeated the greatest scholars, the young revolutionary who organized India's first civil disobedience movement, the social reformer who transcended the rigid Hindu caste system, the supreme renouncer to whom common people, religious leaders, and even kings bowed. And above all, they know of Sri Chaitanya as the perfect devotee who blessed the world with Sankirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy names of God. Here at his birthplace, they worship Sri Chaitanya on the lap of his mother, Sachi Devi. The Renaissance was turning people's vision from God to man, from religion to humanism, from a search for the self to a search for unexplored continents. But in India, Sri Chaitanya and his associates were to shift people's vision back to God and make God's love accessible to everyone. Their lives would exemplify Krishna's immortal teachings in Bhagavad Gita. Theirs was a renaissance in bhakti, devotion to Lord Krishna. In the year 1202, Navadweep was the first city in Bengal to be captured by Muslim conquerors. Despite foreign rule, Navadweep's people, masters at their occupations, were blessed with wealth and happiness. Navadweep's fame as a center of learning attracted students and erudite teachers from various countries. But pride in scholarship and material opulence brought forgetfulness of spiritual culture. Seeing the people of the world overcome by materialism, the powerful sage Advaita Acharya prayed for the Supreme Lord to descend and create a rebirth of spiritual devotion. <laughs> On the evening of February 18th, 1486, there was an eclipse of the full moon over India. Millions of Hindus stood waist deep in the holy rivers, jubilantly chanting the holy names of God. At this auspicious time, Sri Chaitanya was born. A learned astrologer studied the baby's horoscope and saw all the symptoms of Lord Krishna. He declared, Nimai is destined to make the whole world peaceful. The child was called Nimai because he was born under a neem tree. Visitors noticed that Nimai's features strikingly resembled those of Lord Krishna. When the beautiful infant cried, only the loud chanting of Krishna and Hari would make him stop. <laughs> 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 
By baby tricks, Sri Chaitanya had begun his mission. As a boy, he soon surpassed all the other students and became known as a pundit or scholar. At 16, Nimai Pandit opened his own school and attracted many pupils. Although the people considered him an ordinary mortal, he was undoubtedly their greatest teacher in all branches of knowledge. Both Hindus and Muslims loved him. By this time, Nimai was a householder. He and Lakshmi Devi had been attracted to each other from childhood and were married with great pomp and merriment. One day, Keshava Kashmiri, a proud and brilliant scholar who was undefeated in debate, came to Navadweep. Nimai met him on the bank of the Ganges and easily defeated him. That night in a dream, Saraswati, the goddess of learning, told Keshava Kashmiri. My dear Keshava, Nimai is the ultimate source of all your learning. He is your supreme lord, Sri Krishna himself. The next day, Keshava humbly surrendered to Nimai and became his follower. Nimai Pandit's victory became a household topic. The year 1508 marked a turning point in Nimai Pandit's life. On a pilgrimage to Gaya, he met a great spiritual master named Ishwara Puri and received spiritual initiation from him. Ishwara Puri told Nimai, If you want to make spiritual progress, simply chant Hare Krishna. There is no religious method more sublime in this age than Sankirtan or glorifying God by chanting his holy names. Nimai began chanting and returned to Bengal full of ecstatic love for Krishna. People were astonished at the change in him. From this point on, he who had been supreme among all logicians and debaters would now give himself fully to popularizing Sankirtan. He would show people how to become a devotee of Krishna. In this house, every night for a year, Nimai led his associates in Sankirtan, Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya, Gadadhar, Srivas Thakur. One night, Nimai revealed to his followers that he was the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, the source of all incarnations. Thus, all the devotees became fully confident that Nimai was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One of Nimai's associates was Haridas Thakur. Imbued with love of God, Haridas chanted Hare Krishna with implicit faith and purity throughout the day and night. But he was rejected by caste-conscious Hindus because of his Muslim birth. Nimai, however, recognized Haridas as an exalted devotee. Another close associate of Nimai was Nityananda Prabhu. Every day, Nityananda and Haridas went from house to house, asking everyone they met to chant the holy name of the Lord. One day, they approached Jagai and Madhai, two drunken brothers. The enraged Madhai attacked Nityananda with a broken pot. Nimai rushed to the spot and invoked his divine weapon to kill Jagai and Madhai. But Nityananda implored Nimai to extend his mercy. The brothers, moved by Nityananda's compassion, surrendered at Nimai's feet and gave up their sinful ways. The spiritual ecstasy of chanting could no longer be contained. It burst forth in the minds and hearts of the people of Navadweep. Some Muslims and even Brahmins were envious, however. They complained to Chand Kazi, the Muslim magistrate, and one night the Kazi raided a devotee's home, angrily broke a drum and declared, Next time someone chants, I will confiscate all his property. Nimai's response was bold and fearless. He quickly mobilized a hundred thousand people and led them in India's first civil disobedience movement. 
they soon reached the home of the Kazi, who only then realized the popularity of young Nimai's Sankirtan movement. After an extensive philosophical discussion, the Kazi was so moved by the truth and beauty of Nimai's teachings that he pledged, Neither I nor any of my descendants will ever again hinder this Sankirtan movement. Nimai's followers multiplied. His weapon was Sankirtan, and his miracle to turn materialists into pure spiritualists. Yet he occasionally displayed miracles of another type. One night, the son of Srivas Thakur died. Nimai restored the dead body to life. Why are you leaving us? he asked the boy. I live as long as I was destined. I am your eternal servant, a dependent living being. I must act according to your desire. Hearing this, everyone present became transcendentally enlightened. Yet there were those who disdained the Sankirtan movement, thinking Nimai an ordinary man. To capture these critics in his network of love of God, Nimai severed his connection with family and home. In January 1510, Nimai accepted sannyas, the highest spiritual order, renouncing the world and humbly devoting his life to the service of Krishna. Because the order of sannyas was revered by the whole society, Nimai could then spread his movement more effectively. His childhood name was set aside and he became known as Sri Chaitanya. The Lord's mother was heartstruck by her son's renunciation. He consoled her by agreeing to make his headquarters at nearby Jagannath Puri, the holy city in Orissa on the Bay of Bengal. With four others, Sri Chaitanya walked along the banks of the Ganges toward Puri, stopping on the way to visit temples and hear about the pastimes of Lord Krishna and his devotees. Finally, they came to Puri, on seeing the temple of Lord Jagannath, Sri Chaitanya immediately became ecstatic, and when he entered the temple, he was so overwhelmed with love of God that he fainted. Still unconscious, he was carried here, the home of Sarva Boma Bhattacharya, a renowned scholar and logician of Puri. Here, the Lord regained consciousness and met Sarva Boma for the first time. Sarva Boma Bhattacharya had thousands of followers and was the personal advisor to the king of Orissa. Yet, after one week of discussions, the elderly Sarva Boma realized that the absolute truth is not impersonal, but is Krishna himself. He became an ardent disciple of the 24-year-old Sri Chaitanya. The whole city was amazed. Thousands of people began to follow Sri Chaitanya, including the king himself. But the Lord did not stay to enjoy his fame. He left Jagannath Puri to propagate the chanting of Hare Krishna. He embarked on a two-year, 4,000-mile walking pilgrimage to the holy places of South India. In one village, a devotee named Vasudev, who was suffering from leprosy, went to see Sri Chaitanya. But Vasudev arrived too late. Hopelessly disappointed, he fell unconscious. Suddenly, Sri Chaitanya returned and embraced Vasudev, curing his leprosy. The Lord visited the Jiyata Nishringa temple and offered his respectful obeisances on seeing the half-man, half-lion deity of Lord Nishringa in the temple. When Sri Chaitanya was chanting near the Godavari River, Ramananda Roy, the governor of Madras and a highly advanced devotee of Krishna, came there. Sri Chaitanya and Ramananda Roy spent many hours discussing Lord Krishna's pastimes. Finally, Sri Chaitanya revealed himself as the combined form of the Supreme Person Lord Krishna and his beloved consort Radharani. Arriving at Shiva Kanchi, Lord Chaitanya visited the deity of Lord Shiva in a very old temple. By his influence, he converted all the devotees of Lord Shiva into devotees of Lord Krishna. 
Nearby, the Lord visited the holy place known as Vishnu Kanchi and performed kirtan in ecstasy. 500 feet up in the hills at Pakshi Tirtha, Sri Chaitanya visited another temple of Lord Shiva. It is said that two birds have been going to this temple daily to receive food from the temple priest since time immemorial. Sri Ranga Temple, surrounded by seven walls, is the largest in India. There, beneath a golden dome, the 18-foot black deity of Sri Ranganath reclines behind the deity of Lord Vishnu. Sri Chaitanya stayed here in Sri Ranga for the four months of the rainy season. Daily, many people used to come to see him and were freed from the distress of material life. In Madurai, Sri Chaitanya visited the Manakshi Devi temple, built in honor of Lord Shiva's wife. This temple is known as a great architectural achievement. The Lord saw the Malaya Parvata mountain range at Cape Comorin, the southernmost tip of India. Then he headed north, back to Puri. On the way, he became ecstatic when he reached the Adi Keshava temple, where a small deity circumambulates the area every day. In this temple, Sri Chaitanya discovered a chapter of the Brahma Samhita, an important scripture that had long been lost. The Lord copied it and took it with him, considering it a most valuable jewel. The Lord arrived at Udupi, where Madhvacharya, the great devotee and spiritual preceptor, was born and lived. When the Lord saw Madhvacharya's deity of Lord Krishna, he became mad with ecstasy. As the Lord passed through towns and villages, many people came to see him. He blessed them and asked them all to chant Hare Krishna. These people, now empowered devotees, returned to their homes and inspired others to chant. Krishna himself, in the guise of a devotee, had begun to flood the world with an ocean of love for Sri Krishna. The world would never be the same. In 1512, Sri Chaitanya returned to Puri while preparations were underway for Rathayatra, the awesome and magnificent chariot parade of Lord Jagannath. Even today, as for the past 2,000 years, local people construct and decorate new chariots for the yearly parade. The deity of Jagannath, the lord of the universe, leaves the temple tem to run on his chariot and extend his mercy to everyone. Accompanying Jagannath on similar chariots are his elder brother Balaram and his sister Subhadra. Yearly, hundreds of Sri Chaitanya's followers from Bengal journeyed to Puri to join him in Rathayatra. Chaitanya organized his devotees into seven groups of chanters and placed them around the huge chariots. Even Jagannath himself was astonished by the dancing of Sri Chaitanya. He brought his chariot to a standstill to watch with unblinking eyes.
Jagannath is Krishna. And this celebration commemorates the time when Krishna was led from the unsurpassed majesty of his kingdom to the rural village of Vrindavan, where he had passed his childhood. The devotees emotionally carried Krishna back to Vrindavan by the intensity and purity of their love for him. Vrindavan, where pure love for Krishna fills every heart. Sri Chaitanya had wanted to come here for years, and finally, early one autumn morning, he left Puri and headed west toward the land of Krishna. On the way, he passed through the forest of Jarikanda. Attracted by the Lord's deep love of Krishna, the wild animals gave up their old enmities and began to chant with him. The Lord had been absorbed in ecstatic love at Jagannath Puri, but that love increased a hundred thousand times as he wandered in the Vrindavan forest where Krishna had tended his cows. Sri Chaitanya is Krishna himself and he recognized his old friends, the animals, trees, and creepers of Vrindavan. They, in turn, were jubilant to see their Lord again. Each morning, Lord Chaitanya sat alone beneath this tamarind tree and relished the joy of chanting Hare Krishna. In the afternoons, he explained the importance of chanting to his many visitors. The Lord's footprints now memorialize the spot. Lord Chaitanya asked two of his closest associates, Rupa and Sanatan Goswami, to live in Vrindavan, excavate the lost holy places of Krishna's pastimes, and write books about Krishna consciousness. Rupa and Sanatan, along with four other inspired and scholarly Goswamis, contributed the largest and most consistent body of spiritual literature known in the world. They established temples and taught Krishna consciousness by their exemplary lives. For six years, Lord Chaitanya had traveled extensively in India. Now 30 years old, he would spend the rest of his days with his associates in Jagannath Puri. Now elderly, Haridas Thakur had moved from Navadweep to a small cottage near the Jagannath temple in Puri. Because he had been born an outcast, Haridas was not allowed in the temple. But Sri Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, visited Haridas every day. One day, the Lord found Haridas ill. Haridas said, My Lord, I think you will soon end your pastimes in this material world. Before that time comes, kindly let my body fall down in your presence. A few days later, when the Lord came to visit, Haridas fixed his eyes on the Lord's face, chanted Shri Krishna Chaitanya, and gave up his earthly life to return home to the spiritual world. Out of love for this unparalleled devotee, Sri Chaitanya took Haridas's dead body and began to dance, while the entire city chanted Hare Krishna. Haridas's passing, the Lord collected sanctified food and distributed generous helpings to all the devotees, saying, All glories to Haridas Thakur, who attained perfection by chanting the holy name of the Lord. Sri Chaitanya stayed in Puri for 18 years. Each day he would chant and dance in the temple and instruct the countless people who came to him. At night he stayed in this room called Gambira, where his sandals and water pot are enshrined today. Overwhelmed by the glorious sweetness of ecstatic love for Krishna, he experienced inconceivable transcendental emotions. One night, Sri Chaitanya happily wandered in a garden that resembled Vrindavan. Suddenly, he saw Lord Krishna. He began running toward Krishna, but Krishna smiled and disappeared. Another night, the devotees found Sri Chaitanya lying near the Jagannath temple. 
the Lord was unconscious in the ecstasy of sadness, feeling separation from Krishna. The year 1534. One day, devotees saw Sri Chaitanya, now 48, enter a temple of Krishna. He never came out. He had amalgamated himself with the deity of Krishna on the altar. Thus, the Lord concluded his pastimes on earth and returned to his eternal abode in the spiritual world. The immortal culture of Krishna consciousness, as presented by Sri Chaitanya, has been passed from one generation to the next through a succession of great realized teachers, including his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Srila Prabhupada wrote more than 60 books on Lord Chaitanya and Krishna Consciousness. He founded schools, temples, and farming communities on six continents. He installed deities of the Supreme Lord throughout the world, and he inaugurated the chariot parade and distribution of sanctified food worldwide. It was Srila Prabhupada who carried Sri Chaitanya's storehouse of love of God beyond the shores of India and began to fulfill Sri Chaitanya's prediction, one day my names will be chanted in every town and village in the world. In 1984, Srila Prabhupada's disciples began an 18-month walking pilgrimage, retracing Lord Chaitanya's route throughout India, reminding millions of his great spiritual message. Although Lord Chaitanya's followers wrote hundreds of books, the Lord himself left only eight verses. My dear Lord Krishna, he prayed, let there be all victory for the chanting of your holy names, which cleanses the heart and stops the miseries of material existence. They are the prime benediction for all living entities, the life of all transcendental knowledge, and they enable one to taste full nectar at every step. Oh, my Lord, when will my eyes be filled with tears of love as I chant your holy names? Because of separation from you, I consider a moment like a great millennium. You may embrace me tightly or make me brokenhearted by not being visible to me. You are completely free to do anything and everything. But you are my worshipable Lord, unconditionally. Krishna Chaitanya Namne Krishna Chaitanya Namne 